Hello, my name is Ruz. I'm an apps engineer from Zero G Wireless. I'm here to provide a little help and give some details on the Microchip Getting Started Guide for using the Zero G module on a Microchip Development Board. Um, basically, we'll be following along with the Microchip Getting Started Guide, which is available on the Zero G support website. Um, if you have a login for that, you can um, you can go under Sales Software and Documentation and uh, download this download the PDF version of the Getting Started Guide and follow along as you watch this video. Um, this video will basically um, will be going through putting the Zero G Pigtail on the development board, um, installing the development environment, installing some hardware and drivers, and connecting to the board and programming it, and finally running a demo application. And the demo application that we'll be running is the, the TCP IP Wi-Fi demo app which basically runs a small um, website off of the off of the um, development board. Um, the first thing that we'll do is go over the hardware that we'll be using in this demo. And the hardware that we'll be using um, is the Explorer 16 board, as far as the EV, um, evaluation board. We'll be using the PIC24 microcontroller and of course the zero G pigtail and as far as hardware um, we that that's what you need as far as um, microchip and zero G um, besides that we'll be using a Cisco Linksys access point or access point slash router because um, we'll need to connect to that website once we're running it so we'll be doing that across um, the, the PC that we're using and also we'll be using the in-circuit debugger from also available from microchip and this is basically to program the device and connect to it and debug to it if necessary on the software side we'll have three things we'll have the integrated development environment or IDE we'll have the microchip TCP IP stack and the compiler corresponding to the microcontroller that we're using and again for this example we'll be using the PIC24 and that corresponds to the C30 compiler. Um, uh, just to show you where that getting started guide is, we're going to go to support.0gwireless.com. Um, you're going to sign in with your username and password. We're going to go to sales software and documentation. We're going to go to Microchip SDKs under System Dev Kits, and we're going to get the Getting Started Guide. Now, after you've installed the IC, uh, the IDE Integrated Development Environment, um, you're going to get the drivers for the In Circuit Debugger or ICD. Now, there's a little bit of a um, little bit of an issue when you install the debugger. Um, you have to be try careful which driver you install. So I'm going to do that right now just to show that. I'm going to plug the USB interface of the ICD to our computer. And we're going to get a uh, message that it's um, installing the driver. When this window comes up, the standard um, found new hardware wizard, uh, you want to cancel that. We do not want to install the Windows version. Okay, so now um, I'm going to assume that... Um, we were able to install the TCP IP stack and the IDE and the compiler um, based on the instructions from the user's guide. If if there are if you guys have any problems installing any of those software components, um, consult the user's guide or you know file a support ticket, and we should be able to help you. Um, now what we're going to do is um, go over opening uh, a project and uh, manipulating it. So we're going to go to project, open, and again we're going to go over we're going to go over um, the TCP IP Wi-Fi demo app. So if you go to the following path that should have installed when you installed the IDE, we're going to go C, Microchip Solutions. And you'll see under TCP IP Wi-Fi demo app. 
uh, there will be a few projects based on which um, processor you have. Again, for our application, we have the PIC24. So the compiler, we, um, the version of the project we want is the C30. And for help um, choosing which project to open, again, consult the user's guide based on which microcontroller that you're using. And this will just open up in a minute here. Now, a couple. So the first thing we're going to do is look at tcpip.config.h and look at some common things that software developers will need. So, um, for example, let's start with setting a default SSID. If we just search for my default SS, um, SSID, yeah, I believe it's default SSID name. As you can see here, there's a pound define that um, basically um, specifies a default SSID. So any firmware, any firmware, any device running this firmware will, on power up, will look for this SSID name, unless otherwise um, directed. Um, another thing that people might want to look at is um, a default IP address. So if you look at my default IP address. You can see that the, the four bytes that are to define the IP address are located right here. Again, pound defines. Um, and you can see a lot of stuff here, like um, you can see a subnet mask. You can see the gateway, um, DNS server, and the secondary DNS server. You can define all these um, right here. And another one, important one that you'll need is the MAC address. So this, you can define a default MAC address with the first three bytes, for example, you know, that correspond to um, the the vendor, and then either you know either here or through external software, set any number of MAC address bytes that you want for specific devices. Another common thing that people need to change in software um, for you know changing your compile time is changing from infrastructure mode to ad hoc mode. So if you want your device to work in ad hoc mode on power up, um, we can set the firmware, we can set the software to do that automatically. The two things you need to change to do that are that you need to you need to uncomment the following line in the same TCP IP config.h file. Uh, my default link management, and that needs to be set to the ad hoc, um, the ad hoc value, which you can um, in the in the commented text above is network mode ad hoc. So we would change we would change this value to network mode ad hoc, and we'd also comment out this the following line: um, zg config no ad hoc manager. So we'd comment that out. We'd uncomment this line. And we change it to network mode ad hoc as so. Uh, so for this example, we're just going to make sure that we put it back to uh, not ad hoc mode. We're going to put it back to um, the default mode that it was. So to do that, we're going to um, comment this line out and make sure that this line is uncommented. And um, that way we'll be able to uh, go on correctly. 